let's try this one now. Um, very similar to imine formation, but it's now enamine formation. Okay. En, right? En, like alkene, amine, enamine. Okay. So all these names are so clever, right? Enamine. So again, very similar to imine formation. The only difference is instead of having a primary amine, right, we have a secondary amine. Okay? So when that happens, we're going to um, make an enamine instead. Okay? So um, I'm going to erase uh, all of this because I know what we're going to. Did everybody write down all that stuff? Okay? So, First thing you have really want to realize, honestly, is that um, this molecule is more basic than this molecule. Okay, so the first proton transfer from sulfuric acid is going to go onto this molecule here. Really doesn't matter all that much, but it's good to know, okay? Because the first step of the mechanism is going to be protonation of the key. So, and in actuality, it's going to make more product. got this plus now the conjugate phase plus sulfuric acid. Okay. Um, not really that big of a deal because we're just going to use that as the acid. Okay. The quaternary amine is that, or the um, protonated amine as the acid. Um, I don't need to put CH. So, first step, protonation of the ketone oxygen. And again, like I said, if you had done this directly with sulfuric acid, it's not like it would take up any points. It's just good for you guys to think about which one's more basic, you know. And again, this is going to be an equilibrium. All acid-base reactions are in equilibrium. this and then of course regenerated dimethylamine. Okay. Remember this thing's now remember our what we've been calling our super electrophile. Okay, let's actually write it down finally. So whenever you see something like this, not, not like whenever you see that, definitely. But whenever you see something like this, right, going to be attacked, okay? Anything that has that carbonyl oxygen with a plus, it wants to be attacked because it wants to get rid of that plus charge, okay? So that's our super electrophile that we've been calling. Very good nucleophile. It's going to attack. I don't need to draw that resonance structure right anymore. You guys have gotten that resonance structure of the super electrophile. Again, in equilibrium. So you've got some sort of base in there, okay? Whether it's the initial 
uh, starting material, some excess water, some other things that are in there. The conjugate base of the acid, sulfuric acid, anything, okay, could be in there. Um, in fact, it could be another one of these molecules, okay? So what's going to happen is you're going to have, let's just say water is the base, okay? Or let's just say any old base is the base, okay? Because we don't really know what it's going to be. It could be a variety of things. That's going to remove that <coughs> proton then. Again, it's an acid-base reaction, so it's going to be in equilibrium. You'll see, uh, again, just like always, the driving force of these reactions is going to be formation of one of these small molecules. Okay? We got that now? Is everybody okay with that? That's again, so I don't have to say, I'm going to protonate this, erase this thing, and then do it again, like you guys don't like me to do when I say it. Can I just erase this part? Okay, so now reprotonation. So that's that protonation, deprotonation, reprotonation step. Again, in equilibrium. So this is the step that pushes the reaction forward, right? Why? Because we're going to be making water, okay? It's a very stable molecule. Like that. So remember, kick out the leaving group, always, okay? It's always this kick out of the leaving group. And what kind of arrow are we going to have here? A straight forward arrow. Again, there is a chance that water will come back and attack, but it's good to think of this as the driving force step. Because why? Because this is where we're going to be removing that water, okay, if we've got a drying salt or something. So if you really wanted to, you could put that minus H2O to emphasize that you're removing that water, but it's not necessary. Okay. Showing this step, showing this is good enough. So, what are we going to make? Not yet. We're very close to it, though. So, we're going to remove that water. But this is not, this is not something that we can isolate. Okay? We could isolate this, but it would be more difficult, and it's not an enemy, right? We'd have to isolate it as a salt or something. But we've got starting material, which is a base. We've got this amine, which is a base. We've got a lot of bases in here. Okay, so we're just going to put another just general base, okay? Probably the same thing here. And it will actually remove the alpha proton here. Okay. That alpha proton becomes very acidic. Why? Because that nitrogen, just like over here, where we have that super electrophile, it does not like to have that positive charge. Okay? So it wants to have something that will make it get rid of that positive charge. So if you've got a base in there, we'll deprotonate that alpha proton there. Those electrons will move to there. Those electrons will move to there, and now what do we got? Yeah, our final product. So don't jump to the conclusion that you're making the enamine. If it were an imine, right, we would have been done at that point, right? 
But since it's the enamine, because we don't want that positive charge there. And then, of course, the HB plus, this will be washed away when you extract this from your reaction. So that's your product. So that's en enamine formation. Okay. So is everybody cool with that? So in this case, remember, you have to have um, an aldehyde or a ketone and a secondary amine. Are there any questions? Definitely not, huh?